Okay, I want to tell you about escape velocity. Uh, escape velocity, let's define it as uh, it's the minimum launching velocity required for an object to never return once, once it's launched. So you're going to sh shoot something off of the Earth or any other planet or, and it's going to um, take off and it won't ever come back. It won't turn around and come back to the Earth. But um, a couple key things. It's the minimum speed for this to occur. So you can go faster than the escape velocity and it for sure won't come back. But what is that minimum speed that's necessary for it to never come back? Another thing is, uh, this is assuming no energy is added along the way. So like in a rocket um, that NASA would send up, they put energy on the rocket you know, in the form of fuel. And so there, they don't have to achieve escape velocity. The escape velocity we're going to derive, they don't have to achieve that um, at launch because they're going to um, continually add speed. And so that's, that's how they can, they can um, escape from the earth and never come back without um, having it be so fast at, at the beginning. Okay, so how do you figure out escape velocity? Well, the bottom line is if you don't want to be bound to the Earth, you have to have um, a total energy of zero. So that's how you figure out escape velocity. So like if here's your planet, and you're going you're gonna to take off and never come back, then what you would like to do, we're, we're going to do an E equals E prime. So E equals E prime. So um, the E, when you take off, you have, um, you're going to have kinetic energy, one half mv squared of the rocket. So I'm going to say, uh, let's call it the rocket m sub r, vr squared plus negative g times the mass of the rocket times the mass of the earth all over um, the radius of the earth not squared that's this is the potential energy of the rocket earth system so right there that's how much potential energy it has right there and this is how much kinetic energy it's going to have right there now when it gets really far away we would like it to have um, if it's if it's the minimum speed it can have and still never return then we'd like it to get to infinity and have no energy so at infinity, uh, we would like the um, velocity to equal zero. We don't. If it gets there, if it gets to infinity with more than zero velocity, then we we could have sent it slower. Okay, so that's going to equal a lot of space there. Then the e prime is at infinity. So this is at the surface. I'll call it E at the R of the surface. And then um, this is at infinity. Now the energy at infinity is um, kinetic energy. That's a prime for later on. Plus um, G, mass of, the, uh, mass of the rocket, mass of, say, the Earth. And then... Um, this is at infinity, so RE, how far away is the rocket from the Earth? It's an infinite distance. Oh, and by the way, we'd like this to be zero, too. If that's zero, then this whole thing is zero. And if we divide a number by infinity, you might guess when you divide any number, finite number by infinity, it goes to zero. So it turns out that... to have uh, you'd like your total energy to equal zero then you know that you're sending it at the right speed so um, what I'm saying is one half mass of the rocket times the velocity of the rocket initially it's got to eat it's that plus negative G mass of the rocket times the mass of the earth all over the radius of the planet radius of the earth not squared that all has to equal zero. So let me bring this term on the other side and um, solve for VR. 
So um, when I do that, I'm going to have one half mass of the rocket times the velocity of the rocket squared, strange V there, um, that equals um, G mass of the rocket times the mass of the earth all over RE. Let's get rid of um, the mass of the rocket. Apparently it doesn't depend on the mass of the rocket. Uh, multiply both sides by 2 and take the square root. Okay, this V then is going to be equal to 2 times G times the mass of the planet that you're firing from all over the radius of the planet that you're firing it from. Square root it. This is called the escape velocity. And there you have it. If you want to find the escape velocity of the Earth, you would simply put in, um, if you want to get the escape velocity of the Earth, the mass of the Earth times g times 2 divided by the radius of the Earth, square root it. So that's how you find escape velocity. Again, it doesn't depend on the mass of the object. A little object has the same escape velocity as a big object. Okay. Um, now, are you going to memorize this? No, I don't want you to memorize this. In fact, um, I'm, if, I, if I ask you to, for the object's escape velocity, I'll probably ask you to derive it. So you, ne you need to know how to derive this. It's part, of, it's part of what they want you to be able to do. And it's not that bad. It's, I mean, it might look bad here, but it's just E equals E prime. Hey, I have a few minutes. Let me just solve one more problem that doesn't have to do with escape velocity here. Let me just solve one more problem there. Um, if you are on the Earth, here's the Earth, a radius R. And let's say you drop a hammer from 2R. 2 times the radius of the Earth. And uh, it comes flying down and it hits the Earth. How do you get the velocity if you drop a hammer from up there if if you neglect air resistance and that's a big that, that you you probably should not be neglecting air resistance it's going to be a big factor but let's assume that there's that we let's not put an air resistance right now we'll put an air resistance later um, so in any case this is going to come plummeting down to the earth how fast will it hit the surface of the earth so how fast will the hammer hit what will be v final of the hammer Okay, well, you're not going to get this done with Newton's laws because the A is in constant. So that would be tough. But you do get it done with E equals E prime. You say uh, that it doesn't have any kinetic energy at, at this spot, but it does have some potential energy, mass of the hammer, mass of the earth, all over um, 2R. That's where it starts. That's its potential energy at the beginning. That has to equal the potential energy it has just before it hits which is you might think it doesn't have any potential energy but it does relative to infinity it does it's got this much potential energy plus one half mv squared this it's this v that we're looking for so you can get rid of the mass of the hammer and um, at this point you can solve for v final uh, maybe by multiplying both sides by 2, every term by 2. Well, let me bring this on the other side first. So when I bring this on the other side, I get G, mass of the earth, all over R, minus G, mass of the earth, all over 2R. That's equal to 1 half V final squared. And so you can see where I'm going to go with this. I'm going to multiply that by 2. And I probably could pull out common terms. And so I just have 1 over r plus 1 over, minus 1 over 2r. Anyways, I'm done with this. This is how you solve um, a problem where you drop something from way up there. Where the g is changing. It's not 9.8 meters per second squared the whole time. All right. Thank you.